you are of God, you must live according to his own pattern. You must. If indeed you are a Christian, you are a believer. Listen. A money that God is involved, you don't call it a mistake. And what people fail to do is for them not to look into their own mistake and correct their mistake. Amen. The marriage is not a mistake. The mistake is the attitude in the marriage. The mistake is the way the marriage is handled. So the marriage is not. And today we share a lot of people that haven't married with children, haven't spent five years, 15 years, 10 years. And one day you wake up that you are not doing again. Something is wrong. But here we are, we have people that are not willing to honor to discover where it was wrong. What was my fault? What was my own fault? There was a fault somewhere that was leading to the crisis or to the domestic violence. There was a fault. But the moment you refuse to discover the fault and you think is the best thing, it is not the man. You have to change the man or change the woman and marry another. I am telling you the problem has not been solved. Because the problem is you. So irrespective of where you go to, if you go to heaven, you have not repented from it, you, are, you will be there with Christ. In heaven, with angels, you will still misbehave. Praise God, church. Is someone getting something here? So, until when you realize that there was a mistake somewhere, and the mistake has to be fixed, then after the mistake has been fixed, you watch what will happen when this issue continue or will there be peace. Something has happened and there was no peace in the marriage. No peace in the home. And either you are claiming I'm a man, shut up. You are a woman, I'm your wife, I'll be your brother. Or the woman will be claiming I'll marry you, you cannot do anything. And we will die all manner of things and we say on insulting each other. It is not the best. Praise the Lord. So the marriage you are accusing, and you say the marriage is wrong, that is the mistake the marriage. If only you could discover the mistake, the faults, the attitude you are putting on and correct from them, changing from them, you will know that that marriage you are is the best marriage. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says something in the book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 16. It says, God hates what? Divorce. When should divorce become an, um, an option? When should divorce become an option? Is it when your wife slapped you? Is it when your wife insulted you? Is it when your, your husband is not providing for you? Praise God. The Lord help us in the name of Jesus. And to start with this topic, we are looking at Malachi chapter 2 verse 16. For every answer and solution will be scriptural. I will tell you the reasons why what you see and what is happening is on purpose, continue to happen. I will tell you. There are issues you cannot, no matter how you force it, <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't fix it. No matter how you do it, you can't fix it. Praise the Lord Church. So the Bible says that God hates. Hates what? Hates what? Now, 
A divorce is separation. Put it away. Put it away. But this divorce comes in two forms. So whichever way it happens, here the Bible is telling us that God had what? Divorce. Oh, 
unbeliever. The unbeliever are those that do not believe God. Praise God. So this is what I'm saying. That God hates us. Divorce. They have been divorced in the Bible times. Even when Jesus came on, on ground, he made divorcee. This was why in the book of Matthew chapter 19 from Marcelo This teaching is so important it will bring healing to many homes and it will prepare the upcoming spinsters and bachelors Praise God The spinsters and bachelors among us it prepares you. So it is not enough. Pastor, pray for me. Who is this man? I want to marry. Who is this man? Now, before you take that step, you have to know the criteria. What is, what is involved? What is involved? Praise God. Matthew chapter 19 from verse 7. When you start reading from verse 7, I want to start from verse 7. They said unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a written of the verse and to put her away? Remember before this verse, the Pharisees came and they were asking Jesus, Is it lawful for everything? So they were looking for this. What excuse can we see from our wife to divorce them? What is it can we see? And they went further to remind Jesus that Jesus, before you came, Moses has given us a permission to give our wives a letter of divorcement. So we will marry another. Praise God. The best demand that ordained marriage. So there have been issues before now, but no one could solve it. Moses was unable to resolve a marital issue of his days. You could not resolve it. And the best way in order to see that everybody is carried along is that if this happened, do it this way. So Moses never told them that no, this thing cannot be like this. Because this was how it was ordained from the beginning. And that we are both soon to come and counter with the one that created them. That on their marriage, the maker of marriage, the one that have the blueprints, the one that have the templates, the one that brings that at marriage, and he alone that knows the purpose of marriage. Also, the message we have been practicing this. We saw Moses, we saw God. No prophet like it was come to Moses. But he has permitted us. What will be the fault of a man? What will be the fault of a woman? Before we, 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 we give a divorce letter, I will say we don't do it again in this marriage. Praise God. And Jesus said, the next verse, Moses, because the hardness of what? Of your heart. So this can stick naked men. Because of the hardness of your heart. Because of your disobedience. Because of you refusing to repent. Because you're not standing by the truth. Because there is something in you that you prefer than what God is saying. 
Because you want to go by your own will, not the will of God. You have abandoned the ordinances of God and you choose to go this other way. That is a lifestyle you want. And as a result of that lifestyle, you were protesting. You were protesting. So God never go against any man's opinion. It was the same way. They were crying. Give us a key. We want to be like other nations. They ignore the servant of God. Ignore the word of God. They knew how God led them. So it has never been on their own opinion. But they have to go and inquire. God, what is your opinion concerning this matter? They will always inquire. We want to go to war. We need a we want to we need king. What is your opinion? How should we go? Where should we go? But at this point, they began to compare themselves with other nations and they said, No, we want to be like other nations. So give us a king. So even when prophet somewhere was saying, No, that was not a pattern. This is what God wants us to go. They protested. The Bible said that Samuel was unhappy. Samuel was angry. And Samuel, look at, look at these people have been living for all these years. It has never been any fault in one fault or the other. It has been smooth and peaceful. They have been obeying me. They know I was a man peace of God. Why will they ignore my word this time? Why will they reject my word? They rejected his word. And somewhere that know his life is gone, his way is gone. Everything is supernatural. He has to go to the supernatural. He went to God back and was asking God, These are what the people are saying. And God told somewhere, Allow them. Praise God. I will together. I will give them the kind of king they are looking for. And somebody come back with a prophecy that this king you want to go for, this and this and this and this will, will, will happen. At the end of the day, he will stand against you. Praise God. So they have away. There was something they saw. As so instead of doing it God's own way, said no, we want it that way. Amen. So Jesus was trying to explain to them because of the hardness of your heart. So he suffered you to put away your heart. But from the beginning, what happened? It was possible. I am the beginning, I am the end. If you could not hear Moses, even when Moses is trying to explain to you, you don't understand. But I was the beginning. You have made the beginning. It was not so. So in the beginning, it was made and finished. Praise God. Made and finished. The next one says something.
all together. Not a more. But I want to let you know that even in the case of fornication, it is not even enough. Praise the Lord Jesus. But what do we see today? The enforcement we see going on. Like the way you drink water. You discover that 100% or let me say 99% was not as a result of this. You could see a man a man that is the one that is going out with other women sleeping around already you have divorced yourself and he will be the one that will come up and say no you want to divorce the wife. Praise God, church. There are many things that happen sometimes. It's like if God is not in existence, or maybe what we are saying is His doing. I pray that God will show us mercy in the name of Jesus. Sheep 
of God that was a shape of God indeed will never in any way after he has married and will be looking outside. But because you remain sheep and you have discovered an error, the next thing is you will return away from me. That is the room for repentance. Praise the name of the Lord Church. Is somebody following something here? But the woman that refused to repent and the man that refused to repent and hearing and seeing the ordinances and the precepts of God, the standard of God, and refuses or she refuses, then you know that that person is not of God. But there are people that have been given that defend their marriage. Because they know what marriage is all about. They guide their marriage with all jealousy. Defend their marriage. That does not mean that there is no issue in that marriage. There are issues in that marriage. But the moment they remember God's promises, and the moment they remember God's pactor, because of the fear of God, they cannot hurt each other. They cannot hurt each other. They cannot. There are different kinds of marriages. But there is no marriage that is sweeter, better, glorious, like the Christian marriage. But when the Christian marriage is not like the way it ought to be, then you discover that you, you are in the church, you claim to be a Christian, but you are not. Those outside there that are unbelievers, you see that their own is better. Why? Because you fail to do what is wrong. Amen. Jesus met some people that were caught in the act. You remember the book of John chapter 8? Praise God. She was caught in the act. She was already married though. She was not single. Praise God. And the punishment was for her to be what? To be stolen. She was caught. And so, there was a second chance. When Jesus behold her, look at her and say, no, this is a daughter of Zion. She's not Jezebel. She's not Delilah. Jezebel cannot repent. Jezebel will never hear God's word and repent. Praise God. So there are people that have been given to them. They will honor God more than anything. Satan has been molesting and Satan has been bringing shame and frustrating our marriage. It was Satan frustrating our marriage and she was committing adultery thinking that what she was doing was a normal life. Until when she met, she had been doing that. But on this faithful day, she was caught openly and red handed. And when she was caught, they met Jesus. This is what we are about to do. But the man that ordained marriage is it no. He has foresaw that errors will come. He foresaw that mixtures will come. He foresaw that some people will fall into wrong hands. He saw all of this. And he has made a provision for a second chance. Praise God. And instead of condemning that woman, no, he casted that demon, delivered us her from that spirit, from that yoke. And when she became free, he was asking, where are the people that want to condemn you? They look around, they have not seen them. And Jesus said, even me, me, where be God, I have not condemned you. I have not condemned you. And because they have not condemned her, that was why the grace was speaking for her. For his conscience. And after she was delivered, he said, rise up, continue your life, but see no, no more. Your wife, you catch your husband, or 
job or your husband open up to you and tell you that this is what oh, I was going on with this or this happened. The what we are saying here is there is a room for forgiveness. It is not divorce. It's not an option. Apostle Paul came and went further to give us more light in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Why should divorce become an option? Why? First Corinthians. Chapter 7 from verse 10. Jesus said, All men can't receive the same. Except those it is given. Except those it is given. First Corinthians chapter seven verse ten. Praise God. I said you could see what the Bible says. It says, and unto the glory I command. Yield not I but the Lord. Now listen. There are two commandments here. There are places when Apostle Paul is preaching or is exhorting or admonishing the church. He look at it like using his own discretion and like his opinion. This is me speaking. Amen. And there are other areas that it was the commandment, God speaking, and He will cut it. Like what we have seen here. And unto the marriage I command ye not I. But the Lord, let not the wife depart from where? From our husband. Jesus said. Jesus gave the condition. The reason why divorcement should be established or allowed. So for every child of God, for every believer, you don't depart. You don't push away your wife or put away. Amen. This man, they are giving. They have the grace. Praise God. The next verse. But and if she departs, let her remain what? Or married. Or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his what? And do this. So I told us that it's always a room for forgiveness. Assume Satan came in. What is this? Praise God. What is this? Verse 11. No, verse 11. If she departs, let her remain what? Or married. So, which means when a man Serve the wife a divorcement letter. He said that man should not do what? And the woman should not do what? Mm -hmm. Praise God. The man will not marry. The wife will not do what? Will not marry. So they will be there watching themselves. Until when? Reconciliation have been established when they discover their faults, discover their mistakes, and they will walk to themselves. I am sorry. All there was a reconciliation, whatever thing at all, that will bring them together. Then the marriage will do what? Will continue. 
Amen. The Bible did not say that when a man puts the woman away, then the man should go and marry. No. That both of them will be. But there is another thing. Praise the name of the Lord Church. I will show you. Amen. Amen. The Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Let me have one brother. I want to use for illustration. Who want to come? I should choose. Brother, brother, come. Let me have one sister. Who sister want to go? Any sister can come. Whether you are married, you are single, God. God bless you. God bless you, sister. Happiness. Praise God. Uh, okay, I want to use example. Nobody will take your wife. I know they. I know they join them together. I want to use example. Praise God. I want to say this because of. The little experience I've had for this little time in ministry. Amen. By the grace of God, God has used the grace here. And the marriage that was apart for 19 years, there was a reconciliation. Praise God. For every child of God, and every pastor and every believer will never support a divorce for any reason. Praise God. All together. You have to do all you could to bring the couple to light and try to see what the challenges are. Correct those challenges. And having done all this, there must be peace. So as started from Malachi, and what happened in the times of Moses, and what happened when Jesus was on his earthly ministry, and now we have the Apostle Paul that brought the message to the Gentiles. So all of them, they have never described a marriage to become a entity. It takes the people involved to make the marriage perfect. If there is a perfect marriage. Can I, can I hear you to that? Amen. The two parties involved. So Jesus identified an error. There must be an error. He identified it. And was a part of the an error. Moses identified an error. So Moses could not solve the error and he gave a permission for divorce. And that was not the, the solution to it. And this is what we are saying here this morning. Why should divorce be an option? So on one part, there are people that are children of God that will speak to the word of God. And another part, there are people before they, they found themselves in this area. Something has happened. Are we together? Is someone with me here? How many of you know that some people marry with juju? How many of you are aware? No. I, I want to be practical here. Are you aware? That a young man will marry you with juju. Now, such marriage was not based on law, was not based on a natural phenomenon. Amen. But the, the marriage was based on a spell. Spell casted on a woman. And as a result of that spell, you will be follow. A man will come to the polo. Anyway, go to the polo. Anyway, go to the polo. Until a day will come that the spare will be on her. 
when the spell is off her, amen, she will look at the man. Who is this? Don't worry. I pray the woman supposed to be here today, but she's not here. Hopefully by tomorrow, I'm coming. Maybe when I come, we, some ministers will come. I'm telling you this. I said, I'm telling you because of experience. This is why we don't see things happen and you begin to condemn, begin to criticize. Try to go beyond and see the roots and the cause of it. That we all Christians, we come to church, it is not enough. For me, you can't deceive me with your body. You can't deceive me with your anointing. You can't deceive me with your gifts. You can't deceive me with your... You don't remove this from the church. He said, yes, shall know the truth. And only the truth that will do what? That will set you free. There was a particular woman here. One faithful day we were being passing on Tuesday. Within the neighborhood. And what she used to marry the man was to do. She visited the place. Her sister took her there. And she saw a man. She liked the man. The man has money and all that. And that was what she used against that man. And finally, there was a marriage. Everything was going on. And on a daily basis, she visited that evil altar, that shrine. And the man keeps servicing the marriage. Keeps servicing the marriage. Keeps servicing the marriage. The fake love. And one day, the man died. This is not the study. This is a true life story. It happens here. Praise God. The man died. When the man died, problems started in the home. The man that loved her, the man that spent for her, the man that do this, the man began to change. Praise God. And even when she came here, the Lord opened my eye. He said, Ma, what do you use something over? Where do you go? She was still trying to hide away. And all she was doing, she was crying. Pastor, help me. I don't want to lose this man. I don't want to lose this man. But just help me. I don't want to lose this man. That is all she was just busy doing. But she was hiding away the truth. When you hide away the truth, how would the solution come? Even when there was a prophecy, like many of you, the Lord will be speaking to you. This is it. This is what is happening. You will keep it away. She was still hiding. She cried, cried, cried. And after that cry, she opened us a pastor. This is what happened. It was an interesting moment. Amen. She said it was not her fault. It was not her fault. It was her sister that pushed her. Her sister that pushed her. So if you don't know, you will think that no, everything is like no. Until we discover what the problem is, and we have to correct it. The Bible said that when the foundation is faulty, what will happen? Oh, my Joseph. This is why you must be a Christian. Before you go, you say, I do. I do. It is not to wear the wedding gown as a problem. It is not that you want to wear suit. It is not that you have done wedding and you put ring and you are showing it on social media. No! You have to know why. What is taking you there? Praise God. And after she said all of that, Seriously, I don't know where to start. Praise God. And the only thing that comes to my mind is say, Madam, number one, you have to repent. You have to repent. Then we'll start from there. Amen. It was difficult for her. And as a secondly, I would like to see your husband. Him and your husband. She said she don't know that this man, whether this man will come. Amen. She's looking for him. She cannot.
not, he will leave the house. One month is not here. One week he will just come. Sometimes he will come and pick something and go that's all. Praise God. And after that meeting, that day, I've not seen her again. Till today. Till today, I've not seen her. Amen. Is somebody getting something? That was an error. That was how a marriage was established. Some people, because of marriage, listen, whatever you see that makes you to go into marriage, that thing you must keep servicing it. Though. Like the woman I just told you, servicing she was going to China. Keep servicing that is what will keep it. Is someone will be here. If it is money, you keep servicing it. Make sure that money is there. Because of the money, that's why you are together with that man. Ensure that that money should not finish. Whatever you can do, make the money keep coming. The money keep going. Because the moment that thing begins to draw, then that is when you begin to define what true love is. True love. Somebody say true love.
say is her friend. Which of her friends she mentioned a female, a female friend. But the one said, no, didn't go down well with her. It cannot be a female friend. Tell me who gave you this phone. And finally she opened up. It was her friend from school. School? Which school? Let's see. He brought you this phone. Say yes. Take me to the place. Amen. She followed the girl. She followed the girl. To go to the parent house. She did not see the, the parent. She met. What happened? What did we give my daughter for? Say, I love her. You love her? What do you want to do? The woman said she became crazy. She don't know what to do. And like that. They came here. When they came here, I was trying to ask it. The girl was not saying anything. And the girl was not saying, I said, please, ma'am, can you excuse me? I said, excuse me. They left me and the girl. And I began to talk to her. When I began to her, I say, I want to marry you. Praise God. Amen. I say, do you still want to go to school? She say, yes. You still want to go to school, yes. And you want to marry this man, I say, yes. What is this man doing? Say, she don't know. You don't know the work, what he's doing. You want to marry somebody that you don't know what he's doing. Praise God. I say, this phone will be collected from you. I say, ma, they turn this phone back to the boy. Want the boy. Nothing should bring them together. Because these are destiny killers. The girl don't know what she was doing. I went together. I went together. The girl don't know what she was doing. And she was enticed and carried away with the iPhone. She has never been on Facebook. She has not done WhatsApp. And from that time, they, they say oh, to collect that phone from her. No, she will not do. She will not do. Publicly before the eyes of the parents and everybody. She was saying no, she will marry him. Nobody will separate her. Can you imagine? Nobody will separate her. Praise the name of the Lord Church. Sometimes there are things you desire when you see. It is when you enter. When you enter, you say, ah, maybe the way they see him from outside. I, I want to get up. You will not see different day. President of the She was on top. She was not a believer. 
she will now discover that no, I need to give my life to Christ. Repent it, give my life to Christ. Pray for her home. Pray for her home. Pray for the husband. She knew what the husband was doing, but she could not help it. But now she said, I know. Maybe God can do it. God can come into it, which is very, very, very possible. Praise God. It continued. Why it continued? He was still living his life. This one went to the point that he rented an apartment. He has his own house. Apart from his house. Praise God. All together. Apart from his house. Rented an apartment. And there he was. They are all within the place of Lagos here. Amen. And he keep moving now with all that cash. And each time he come in trouble, this woman. This woman keep hearing. She keep hearing. She keep praying. She keep hearing. He was denying her some rights. This woman, the pastor and everybody come in. Her family member came in. To the point that accommodation he has the money he refused to pay. And to keep the marriage. If there is anybody who can keep marriage among men and women, is women who they sacrifice and what they do. Praise God. The pastor was involved. Her family member were involved. And they pay an accommodation for this man in order to please him that the marriage will continue. Praise God. And yet, this man did not understand. He's still living the life he was living. At the point, he started coming to church. Praise God. Pretending as if he has repented, but he has not repented. Amen. What was in his mind is there. So this man was just there, but not as his wife. Maltreat her, bully her. Sometimes he beat her, and his own family were not in support of this woman. So it's like this woman was the door. So all effort to see that they are together. Amen. He continued to live until it continued to a point. That he came to the pastor and he said, He wants this woman to leave first. Let her go and learn. Let her get herself. Then, after that, maybe they will come back together. Like the suggestion, Christ or Apostle Paul said, that you don't need to push her away. But Everybody can stay in separate way until they reconcile. And he will not marry, she will not marry. But that was not the case here. President of the law. So, this one has been there crying. She did all she could to see that everything worked. She keep bearing. She keep trusting and believing God. President of the law church. And this one head is already off. The mother, the brother, everybody connected to him. We want to go there. Praise the Lord Jesus. And when he came to the pastor, the pastor looked at this. And the pastor looked at the scripture. He said, yes, it's a good idea. It can be done that way. The pastor asked him, why do you do it that way? Is that the option? Whatever is the, 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 the problem can be resolved. We are working to no. Don't go that way. Don't allow it. Don't do it that way. Keep her there. What was the problem? There was no concrete. Amen. No, nothing. What was the problem? Nothing. What was the problem? Nothing. And each time he sees her, he insults her. Keep calling her names. But she has made up her mind not to move away. Praise God. And to finally hurt her. 
prostrate her. He went and married another person. Amen. And pushed this one away by force. That he was not staying with him. Is somebody following this story? Say she must not stay with him. Push her away. He has another woman. He should brought the woman back. After this one has left. The pussy that he pushed her away was for some months. And while he left, she, the woman left, he brought in another woman. He pregnant another woman. And this woman was crying. The woman returned back and said, no. This place cannot accommodate us. You are no longer my wife. You should go. Praise God. No one person from inside that was talking to him. Like, I want to get her here. I want to get her church. And that was how she left. Praise God. She left. she left him. She was there. The child she has for him, he denied. He said, you will not even have access to the child. Praise God. I want to get her. No, I want Because we must be practical here. And he was living his life. Enjoying his life. Abandon her. She was going to see, visit the child. When the husband heard that she was going, he said some people on the way, don't allow her to come inside. Praise God. Out together. Don't allow her to come inside. So this was lingering happening for years. And she was abandoned. Church, if a pastor, what will you do? Will you ask her to remain? Ask him, this one go. What can we do? It's possible that this is not a child of God. This is a daughter of God. By mistake, by error, she fell into his hands. Praise God. And she was maltreated. There is no destiny. Amen. The Lord help us in the name of Jesus. And this woman said, don't go yet. He went and collected what he has paid to claim her as the wife originally. That was his step. Now, if he really need reconciliation, he will not do that. Will you do that? He will not. He went and said, no. I am no longer interested. You are not my wife. I can't marry you. You are not my wife. The money I paid on your head, I'm, I'm collecting it back. He collected everything and she was left alone. Praise God. And the Bible says that she separate. Nobody should marry. Now, in this case, is she permitted to marry or she should remain until Jesus comes? She should remain until Jesus comes. She should do what? Church, she should marry or she should remain until Jesus comes? She should marry. She should remain until Jesus comes? She should marry. My minister said she should remain until Jesus comes. A man and stay. Which one is preferable? Praise God. This 
was a young woman of that age. Praise God. I, I went together. This was why God bless you. Put your hands together for them. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We're going to stop us. Verse 11. Amen. The woman, the man has collected the bride price. Is that woman, is he still legally married to any man? According to culture, she has nothing to do with that man. Know what made marriage to be a marriage was the bride price. I was going to call it the bride price. It is not because you are cohabiting or staying together. No, it is the bride price that the man pay on your head. That could you could be defined legally that you are married. Praise God. She was not interested to move. She was not interested for the divorce. She has done everything to remain. But this man said no to the point that with what he has done is enough. Whatever we do here is to make a sure that there is peace, godliness, amen, and healthy living. What she went through, the depression and everything, the thinking, the thought, the torments that she went through alone is enough for her to die before her time. And that useless man thinking with that kind of punishment, he will be happy. His own will come. Praise God, Josh. For example, he has not collected the bride price. The marriage bond. If anything happened to him, by any reason for anything, her presence is needed. I want to get that. Contrary why, traditionally why, if he died and that is something she needs to do, even if they are not together, because that bride price, that is a marriage, she will go and do that thing. I'm asking something. But we are looking at the tradition of God. Amen. Let us go down. Verse 12. Verse 12. He said, But to the rest, speak up, not the law. Now, Apostle Paul is now considering another option, another factor. I am trying to advise you not according to the commandment. If any brother had a wife that believed not, and she be pleased to dwell with him. Let him not do what? Now, this was his own. Now, what is that telling you? That you is not necessarily you married from the same place. So you see, believe and believe not. So we have a believer and we have a non-believer. And you marry a man that is not a believer and you are non-believer. That is what he's talking about. Because of that belief, both of you cannot come together in terms. But you must not believe the same thing before you marry whoever you want to marry. So that's what Paul is saying. Praise God. If your leg and your wife is a Muslim, is anybody, any faith, you can marry her and there will be peace. There will be understanding. I want to get a church. Eh? Eh. So he said, This is my saying. And the woman which had an husband that believed not, and if he pleases to dwell with her, let her not do what? Leave him. My wife is not a believer. I am a believer. But she's not 
not troubling me. She understand me. We understand each other. He said, it's allowed. Praise God. And he said, that man can change the woman or the woman change the man. Praise God. Is someone following? I was just stop. Some are standing their questions. If you have questions, no problem, send them. Anyway, you are confused. Amen. The next verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by what? Can you see now? The world is a believer. This one is an unbeliever because of your belief. Out together, you can set the man apart. The man could be affected. Example. You marry a man and your husband does not even go to church. Nothing concerned with church. But because of the grace of God upon your life, you brought him to church. He says he's a Christian, but there is nothing of Christian in him. But because he's a daughter of Zion, a daughter of Zion, you marry him as a smoker, you marry him as a drunker, you marry him as whatever, never whatever thing you marry him. You can marry a man irrespective of whatever he is. I'm wrong, you can marry him. He's allowed. You must know why you are marrying him. The reason why you are marrying him, that is what matters. So the fact that you are marrying him is an arm robber. With the grace of God upon your life, the love you have for him and he has for you, the Bible says that through your grace you can convert him. Is somebody getting something here? Children, your marriage should not be based on the faith. But it's safer and better to marry from self faith. Because the better the understanding, the better the union. Praise God. So that's what Apostle is saying. And the unbelieving one is sanctified by what? By the husband. I've seen marriages because of their wives. That is where you know there is love. Because of their life, because they love their wife. What did they know before the things of God? They began to know it. Praise God. Vice versa. Hey, we are your children unclean. But now are they holy? Verse 15. But if the unbelieving departs, let him do what? Let him depart. Now, those of you that say the woman should not do this, listen to this scripture. He said, But if the unbelieving depart, let him do what? A brother or a sister is not under what? Under bondage. Sister, come. Brother, come. Let's go back to part two. Listen to this. And this is why you must not hold, don't go to one scripture and hold on it. Go hold it. You hold on it and you remain. That is one scripture you know. You don't take your time to make studies and to research to know what happened. And already I asked, and you said this woman should remain till Jesus talk. Now, Mount, if now you were the talk and you will remain. Realistic. If you see a sister like this, the baby, you don't want to go tell her, sister, that is it. You are helping her. Settle down. You are helping her. Praise God. Is somebody telling something here? This one already has proven he's a non believer. This one, she has proven she's a believer. So she was against divorce. She has paid between the challenge and what this one going through and all of that in this family. Who should be the first 
to ask for separation? The wife. By wife, by all standards. She should be the one saying, I want to leave this planet. I want to leave this planet. But she was not saying so. She wanted to remain. She was praying. God, change my heart. Change him. Change him. Upon trying to change it, becoming worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Because he's a non believer. If it is not given to him, he cannot keep it. Sorry, I'm hitting your head. <laughs> so understand the Bible. That is a portion where God is giving. And he has, he has God given him. Has he, has he been given? Is he one of the believers? So upon all he was doing, even one with this one, he didn't learn. Moving with other guests is not enough. Having a different house, keeping them is not enough. And sending her away and went and bring another woman and said she's pregnant. And you think that will be the end of the problem? She will be there praying and praying. Praise God, help my husband. Help my husband. One no, no. Before she prays in the past, before she do 40 days fasting, finish. And she will go to this side. The more she prays, the more you're giving her ginger. The ginger and ginger and ginger. Praise God. These are practical things that happen. No attention, no communication, no care, nothing. What is the marriage all about? Marriage is not by me. It's not that I have a husband. Amen. The two hands must love each other. And they will not be two. Praise God. The Lord will help in the name of Jesus. So this is what Bible says. It says, but if the unbelieving departs, he has departed. Even while she was here, he has departed. Every means to be concerned, he said no. All of that thing, he said no. He's an unbeliever. A big unbeliever, as the Bible described. He has departed. He said, if an unbeliever, unbelieving depart, let him watch. A brother or a sister is not what? She's not in bondage because she's free. They are we together here? And in such cases, but God had called us to do what? To be so the peace of our mind is paramount. What will give her peace? Is it to stay or to settle down? Or what is it that will give her peace? The unbeliever has depart. She's no longer in bondage. Put your head together for the Lord. Praise God. The Lord help us in the name of Jesus. You, if you are speaking to somebody you know, who are you speaking to? Are they believers or are they unbelievers? So you don't group everybody because they, they are in church and you think they are believers. No. All of you that listen to me, not all of you that listen to me. But you are always in the church. Not all of you. Those that listen to me are those God has obtained. Make us to become their pastor. Not everybody here. Not everybody. And this is why whenever we speak, they hear. Because they are said that we should pastor them. They will not go against whatever they are hearing from these people. Is somebody blessed here? Sister, 
The day she wanted to do that marriage, her pastor asked her, don't marry this man. So there was a, a foresight and insight. He said, don't marry this man. Don't marry this man. She went and gave pastor a wine. The pastor rejected it. She went ahead. And do what? In reality, practical things are practical. You can't change from it. If it is not your own, it's not your own. Praise God. That does not mean that we are encouraging divorce. But there are events that will happen, you have to look at it. Amen. I want to get out. None of you here under the sound of my voice. And I could see under the sound of my voice. Anybody here. And tomorrow you wake up. You say, no, there was a mistake. There was no mistake in your marriage at all. Are you here? No mistake. So don't use that scripture. Tomorrow you wake up and say, no, pastor has preached a message. No, there was a mistake. No, there was an error. No error. If there is error, I'm going to tell you. Praise God. So no mistake. Amen. No mistake. And nobody under this bridge, whether we join you or by mistake or anyhow, that you will come and say no. Mm -mm. no. And this is why we are not desperate to join people before we join you. You must go through some rigorous counseling. We have to open your eye wide to see what you are saying yes. So that if you begin to do this, when you remember, you say, Praise God. So don't listen to yourself. There are marriages that have been going through issues, going through some things. And under this place, you came here. Peace. I cannot go and begin to mention. No, 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 no. But it is something that is reality this happening. So you must understand, are you a child of God? Are you a believer? You must be one. You must be one. And stand as one. You are representing his mandate. Amen. So what do you think is marriage is not marriage? When Abraham engaged Hagar, she don't get a child for her. She don't get a child. She has a child for her. But did Abraham marry her? Did he keep that woman? He didn't keep her. He sent her away. Because a bright price was not paid for her. So if you are with a man and a woman and a bright price has not been paid, you are committing funny fornication. And such marriage. Tomorrow he said you want to go. You want to go. Well, no, nobody, don't stress anybody. That already no divorce there. It's not a divorcement. You never enter before. You never enter. So you want to go, you go, no problem. When you enter, it is what Abraham plan to be. Praise God. The Lord will bless us. In the name of Jesus. And those of you men that haven't done all of this, you say no, the children belong to you, the children belong to you. When the guy was living, she left with Hishimelo. She don't live for Abraham. She lived with Abraham. She left with Jesus. She left. She carried him. Praise God. Now, somebody have a question there before we go to God in prayer. Quickly. If a woman marry and her husband die, and the woman want to remarry, can she return the bride price? No, 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 no. Praise God. The day has come to the bride price. Until day do you pass. The bride price is speaking. When that man is no more alive, the bride price is dead. 
So if she like, she marry. If she like, she doesn't marry. No problem. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. So it's a choice. There are people that the Bible describes as Enoch. God made them, they will not marry. So it is not a crime. When you say you will not marry, it is not a sin. You will still go to heaven. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. If you want to remain like that, no problem. So God say that some people are just you know, they cannot. They will not marry. They choose not to marry, they will remain like that. And they gave themselves for the service of the kingdom. Example, like the reverend father you see, the reverend sister, the genuine one, not the one where put on the white girl and say reverend father, then they do another father for corner. Amen. I'm talking about the new one. They are fulfilling the scripture. They are obeying the scripture, going against the scripture. Giving the same for service. Apostle Paul was one. He never married. He gave himself, dedicated his life and everything for God. For the service of God. But he was not against marrying. He was even advising. If he can be like me, fine. If he cannot be like me, marry. Whatever that will make your body, you cannot keep your body pure. And for God, he said, it's better you do what? You marry. But the Apostle Paul, he has a grace. He was not a fornicator. He kept himself. Praise God. So for whoever that cannot keep, he said, marry. That was the condition. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So this is not any widow, a widow, is he permitted to to marry, irrespective, once the person is there, you don't, you don't need to go and collect a bride price. Bride price is collected when the person is alive. Praise God. Praise God. Instead of divorcing his wife, can a brother be permitted to marry another wife in the case of having misunderstanding with the first wife? John, what's the answer? No, sir. Praise God. In the case of having misunderstanding with what? No, sir. Amen. All together. So nobody is permitted. To go and have a second one. Hallelujah. And nobody will have a second one here. Amen. Amen. Now let me go for that. The next question is Matthew 19 7. Please put it on the screen. The, the reading of the first man, dowry, can, can, can be returned. Okay, cannot be returned. Okay, can it be returned? A divorcement has been given. Can it be, be, be returned? God bless you, sir. You reminded me. When I was saying this initially, I said the divorcement was in two forms. Am I right? Do you remember? It was in two ways. So the first divorcement is you could be separated, looking for a way to reconcile. You will not marry, I will not marry. Stay where you are, stay where I am. Are we together now? Eh? Yes. Then another divorcement is you are separated. It is a letter to indicate. So, in the first place, what do the joining? Are we together here? So, if you are separated by courts, The social whatever, and you be, you belong to a particular faith. Say a Christian, praise God, and you are from a particular religion, and your tradition has its own definition. So, when, before you marry that woman, you don't marry her on sky. You don't just see her bring her home. You follow a process. 
out, out, out together. You follow your process. So for a divorcement to be fully effective, that marriage has to be dissolved by following that sort of process. Whatever that cost that bring the, the you know the union. Are we together now? That thing has to. Amen. So on edge, there are some things that is still binding. Is someone here? In shorts. I don't want to mention the person's name because this sister, the person is linked to somebody here. But she's not in Lagos. Hi. When she called, Oh, man of God, blah, 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 blah. She wanted to settle down this one, that one, and she saw somebody this one, that one, that one. And I requested for the name of the person, the image of the person. And while I was praying, I looked at this, looked at the image, I said, this person is married. This person is married. But I don't know whether it's still in that marriage or what happened. I said, ah, this, I'm seeing children together with this person. I said, let me call, I don't call her. I said, this man, sorry, I want to ask, is this, is he married before? Or did he marry before? Is there any marriage? Did he marry before and there's no love more in that marriage? He said, no, he's married though and he's still in that marriage. Ah! You could see how Satan, young girls that have never tasted marriage before, it is the, the married men they are following. Satan, they are Satan. Praise God. You know a man is married, and you could not see any woman, any man around you to go, to follow, to marry, even to friend. It is the man that is married. Your eye is. And you are aware you know the man is married. Thunder. <laughs> Upon that person's head. Praise Is busy. I can tell you this. This week, on Friday and on Saturday, two women that are not married, they are not leaders. And that is the marriage they are telling me they don't want, they don't marry. And they are happy in it. A woman, when I ask her, to have you seen the, the wife? She said, yes, you have seen her. How many children? Say she has the man that has three children. Why do you want to go and marry him? Say, no, 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 she loves him. She, she met him. Nobody can give her peace apart from that man. Nobody give her happiness apart from that man. She shall see the love of her life. Do you know what I told her? I said, ma, you are writing your will, death, death sentence, but you don't know. I said, you see that woman? She's very tough. You know, any boy that do anything with that man, be ready to carry your course. So she now told me, okay, that that same man came and was telling her that uh, some people are related member went for prayers and they say that uh, the step want to take you should not carry. She know that there was a manipulation. I said there is nothing you can do about it, though. But nothing you can do about it. Leave that man alone. God is bringing one for you. Praise God. I said God is bringing one for you. That is why you go and hook to a man that is not your husband. Did that man say he had a problem with his wife? No. It's possible the wife doesn't even know that the man is doing what he was doing. He was that corner, not doing it, and you are the one bobbing his head, bobbing his head, taking suya, doing every other thing. Holy Ghost! It will never be better with that woman.
women. No. Such women, it will not be better for them. A single woman, a single woman for that matter, like, like you, this, you, you are taking a curse upon yourself. Become a marriage snatcher, husband snatcher, marriage you scatter who? Hey, sugar daddy, sugar mommy. Praise God. The Lord help us in the name of Jesus. And this is the reason why you must be Christian, you must be believer. Don't enter marriage and begin to suffer that woman. Don't let it enter your blood. It should not enter your mind. It should not be it. Don't let it cross your mind. I said here on Sunday, I said you've not met women that pray. A marriage that is genuine. You will not even go further. Where you want to go? Praise God. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So, if you want to divorce properly, then the bride price has to be paid. Divorcement is not by later. Like what we do here, after everything, we give you certificates of marriage. <laughs> certificate of marriage. You know the carry you Certificate of marriage. If not, I'm going to tell you anything. No, no, that, that no be here. If you come to church, pastor, are you with us? No be here in this talk. Are we together? There was a father house. Your parents. Where the village is. You go village that time. Go back to the village. You will see some. One more now. Am I right? <laughs> then they there, they are, they are waiting for you. Before you come, they don't be like that car. They don't carry. Eh? They don't stand away for you. Praise God. And they will tell you what our culture demands. We respect culture here. When Abraham was cooking the wife for his child, he told the, the what's his name? Elias to help get a wife for his son Isaac. A bright price was paid. Those things you saw, the man was given to the woman. He went to the woman's house. Many of you care today. A man will see you on the road and he marry you on the road. He toss you on the road, marry you on the road, and you call it a marriage. It is not a marriage. You are a shame. A responsible care. No matter what that person is. Even if you don't respect your father for your own respect, you will bring that man to home. You will not stop there. You must bring that person back home. But today, what you see is different. Many of you, you meet in the bus. The driver become a pastor. Conductor become a stand pastor. And that is your manager. They will join you there, and nobody will talk to you and you will hear. Because you met in the bus. God bless you, sir. And your own. Some people is Facebook. Who is the owner of that Facebook? Man, what? Is that your name? Right? Now in the job, many managers. So. Nobody is here. In open Facebook. In there behind. When I go down to meet. It's Facebook. Become the pastor, become your parent. Everything meet there and goes. Praise God. The Lord help us in the name of Jesus. So if you are dissolving it properly, you have to dissolve it properly as a child of God. Then you know you are not doing it again. You have nothing to do. A marriage is something you bring together and you join them together. Are we together? That is what makes it the marriage. When these things are like this, for example, are apart. Brother, come. Face the crowd. Now look at this. Why do we do our hands like this? Hold, hold your feet out there. Can you see now? If I did. Because we are married together. Eh? They drag me now. These are the drag you. You see, this man gave power. No one's wrong. He was respecting his pastor. 
When I say black men, I say, okay, you want to wear your pastor? Press up. Can you see now? That is, how, that is what they call marriage. So there was something that binds them. They cannot be separated. All together. If one is separated, it is not you come and taking the mind from me. They have certificates. It's not you come up taking the certificates. All together. It is not so you No. Know. What caused the binding until you do that? After it has been done, lose your hands. Separate. Can you drag me again? Can I drag it? God bless you. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Sir, what is your take on the 7 11? Not 11 7, 7 11. Let me see. Okay, yes, 7 11, please. But as each she departs, let her remain what? Or marry. Or, 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 you need to consider. So, that was a window created for what? For reconciliation. I give you an example. As a believer, and as a child of God, and one that fear God, and respected the word of God, and my wife, as a believer, as a child of God, I'm giving an example. If this scenario happened to us, she will remain, I will remain. I will not marry. She will not marry. I want to get her here. Whatever happened, we remain, she remain. Until when that is reconciliation, we reconcile back. We'll come back to there. But that after that, I will go and begin to marry. For what purpose? I didn't catch her fornicating. She didn't touch me for the kitty, maybe misunderstanding or something, and we are just like that. Are we together? So it is not an, a license for me to go and marry. If I marry, then already I am studying something wrong. It is not the marriage. If you go and do the same thing, something wrong, and we are violating, violating the scripture. And we, so if we are talking about believers, understand what we are saying. Jesus said, there are people that has been given unto. There are people that has not been given unto. I, I, I will together. If you're a believer, let me see your hand up. View them. View them. View them. A believer. A, a believer. If you're a believer, praise God. God bless you. That is it. I, I, I will together here. I have seen some cases. It has happened. Both of them remain. And after how many years they came back again? Nobody married because they have not God. You have hurt me, I have hurt you. Oh, let's do this thing. Okay, fine. Everybody keep doing what you're doing. But nobody. They did even after that separation, no funny kid, no adult to anywhere. Because they respect God's word. Now, these are the people Jesus is talking to. He's not talking to unbeliever. Unbeliever will not respect his word. Uh, is somebody with me here? Don't complicate issues. So he's not talking to unbelievers. And I defined it from the beginning. Because you come to church does not make you a, a believer. Because I can press a pastor does not make me worse. The only time you a believer is this. Like the illustration that we illustrated, this sister defended her face. She stood until the end, even at the end. Praise the Lord of Church. I went together. Uh -huh. So that is that for that. I, I hope I've answered that one. Then, let's go to the next one. What if the family of the man asks the man to marry another man? Is it permitted? It's not permitted. For those of you that you are going, your marriage is your family, 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 family. You are not mature to marry. You are, not you are waiting for your family to approve. Even after you have married your, your wife and your husband, both of you cannot come together in, in compromise, in agreement thing, or discuss one thing. You don't start a meeting and finish it until a family member is entered. Both of you have to go back again. 
There is no maturity in that. Now, so you could see where your problem comes. You could see how problem comes. You want to travel, your husband says, Don't travel. And you come back to your husband and say, No, my mother says, Make a travel. My uncle says, Make a travel. And you carry your bag and you're traveling. Don't worry, you will go and meet that your uncle when you come back. Praise God. Now, instead of you to be submissive to this man that you are already under, is your husband. He said, Don't travel. Why did you say I should not travel? I am traveling. This is why I want to travel. Now these are two issues coming together. Discuss the issues and look for a way. Look at the way. Maybe there was something he saw and he has a reason. Or is that your reason? You also reason and think over it. If the reason is not tenable, then you bring out your own reason. But it should not end in quarrel. And you have to upgrade uh, 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 your father, your mother, or somebody else approve before. Your husband says, a dick uncle wants to eat. You look around, look around, look around. Your father is coming. Your, your mother-in-law is coming. Or your uncle is coming to visit you. And he say, eh, I want to eat eh, eh, okra. Just pure okra. Listen. If you have okra, you have a dick uncle. For the sake of your marriage and your husband, Prepare in the You will prepare that one first. Keep up. Then prepare the one for the visitor. Amen. If you go to your husband, tell your husband, if we are expecting a visitor, we want to prepare this. It's your husband, okay, no problem, no problem. But when your husband insists, this is what we will eat, this is what we will eat, and you go against what he said that you want to eat because you want to please somebody that is connected to you. It is false and error. So the only thing you have to balance it, you have to prepare the one you want to eat and you prepare the one your pistol will eat. You have balanced the equation. President of the Church. So be very careful bringing in family issues, family to your own, your extended family to your own uh, immediate uh, family. So what if the family of the man asks the man to marry another? So, if somebody is the one telling you to, to leave your wife because of what they saw that you don't see, even when you see and they are advising you, and you go by that advice, Colomenta. Praise God. Is it truth? You should be. You should not allow anybody to talk nonsense. Even that, that, that man that is bringing down that man should be afraid of you. You should not have the mind to open it and tell you. Because you know that you will not be happy. Praise God. I want to get that. So there are things you must not give ear, give attention to for it to happen. You don't do that. Somebody will be telling you, advising you, you should marry another person. Thank, thank God. This reminds me. The first illustration, my sister, come. Sorry, we are, God is using you today. Much more strength. Thank God already, God has given you too much strength. My sister here, at that time, there was a family member who was advising the man. He said, send her away. Marry another one. Marry another one. His brother. That time, the brother was enjoying his own wife. Kukulele. Everything they happened smoothly. And he was advising another person. I beg, how could she could misbehave to you? Send that in. Send that in. And when it happened to this one, not long from that time, it won't happen. God bless you. Praise God. Many things you think you are saying, you are doing, they will come back to us with one way or the other. If you are giving the wrong counsel, it will come back to you. If you are the type that advise people to do the wrong thing or push them to ditch, 
it will come back to you. Praise God. Now let's take the next one. He said, at what age is it advisable for one to get married in both genders, male or female? At what age? At the age of maturity. When you are matured in mind, matured in heart, praise the name of the Lord Church, you can tolerate. Eh? You can tolerate. No. I will marry, if I marry him, I won't take that shit from him. What? That nonsense. No, 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 no. Not me and him. Then what we are saying is it is not yet time for you to marry. Praise God. If your husband or your spouse cannot put you right or correct you or talk to you because of faith, you are somebody. Or either you are more than him or anything. And you just want to marry him because either when is for one purpose or anything. And then there is a condition for that kind of marriage. Amen. First Peter chapter 3. We'll come to that. Amen. I will show you something there. So at what point, at what age, is that age that you are mature? It is not when you are 30. It is not when you are 15. It is not when you are 25. To marry early is very good. There are advantages. But there are issues in marriage. So, will you be, are you, have you grown to that point to handle the issues in the marriage? Please go. All together. Have you grown to that point to handle such issues? That is it. So, this is the reason if you are that understanding and you know you have not gone to that point. You can divorce. You will part your children and go back to your father's house. You say you prefer that. So most at times is immaturity. Praise God. It's immaturity. So immaturity has caused a lot of broken homes. Amen. A lot of broken homes. Praise God. Now. Look at it. First Peter chapter 3. This is chapter 3. I am. Good. Let me, let me, it's a long video, but let, let me just take this. If your wife, you cannot do this, then you know there is something is wrong. He said, likewise, your wife, be in subjection to your own husband. That is both wife and husband. It's the same thing. That if any obey not the world, they also may without the world be won by the But go the next verse. I'm talking about verse 5. And he said, why then you hold? Your chase conversation coupled with fear. Uh -huh. Now, whoso have done it, let it not be that at what are done in of prison. Go to the next verse. And he said, But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament uh -huh, of the meat. Go ahead, the next verse. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy woman also who trusted in God, that is the believers who, the Christians, have done themselves being in subjection unto their own. The holy woman, today, we're not against that kind of woman, who, in the day very scarce. Praise the Lord of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But if I should begin to count, if I should begin to count, if I should begin to count, let me count. We cannot find all the people here like the old women. Praise God. Amen. Put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them. So in subjection unto their own husband. So with this, you will know who comes in, who talks to you, and where you take counsel, who approves works, and, and that. Now, if I marry a wife and have a child together, and she later leaves the man and go with the child and leaves the child in her custody or her family and goes on and goes on her own action. What should the man do or take? Now listen, this is like you have a man you, you are married and the girl leaves you. 
and go with the child and abandon the child, for example, and not take care of the child. Praise God. Now, the only reason you go pick up the child is to ensure that the child is taken care of. Praise God. I want to get that. Is to ensure that the child is taken care of. Now, if the woman in question abandoned the child and not taking care of the child, number one, you the man, have you carried out your own responsibility in doing what is needed, providing for the child? If that is yes, and you are providing for the child, and yet the woman in question is not giving attention to the child, then it is not the wrong thing to look for other alternative for the sake of the child. Praise God. But I am not in a, you know, or advise any man that what we, we see today, your wife leave you, you abandon your wife, or you divorce, or anything happen, and maybe even out of wedlock, and you go and pursue after that child. As long as that child remains, you know, within some age bracket, that child is permitted by law, by moral standard, by all means should be under the care of the mother. Praise the Lord of the Because the attention and the care that that mother will give to that child, you can't do that. Your own mother might not be able to do that. I want to get that. I want to get that. So, I want us to get that straight. All you need to do in that case, as a man supports, ensure you monitor them. Keep monitoring them. Monitor them, support them, and how do you do that? Don't disconnect the communication. Praise God to endeavor and to see that the child is well trained. Praise the name of our Lord Church. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. If a man marry a woman and both of them have misunderstanding over 20 years and requested for his bride price and the parent refused to pay the bride price while the woman is burning for another man. Oh, wait. The woman is going to commit adultery and point out another, another man and the man is requesting for the bride price and the parent said they will not give the bride price. Praise God. Now, this is, you know, in all of it, that is another area of wickedness. Amen. And in African culture, in African culture, the question I want to ask here is, when they have misunderstanding for over 20, this was lasted for 20 years, and for these 20 years, what has been happening? What was the man doing? So we have to know the position of the man, the position of the woman. Amen. Because you have to consider and look at it. When God is judging, God will not judge based on anything, but he will look at the scripture. That was why we are using the scripture to solve these questions. Amen. You have the scripture. You could cite the woman or what the woman is doing. What about the man? What about the what is the man doing? But as long as the man too decided and everybody parted for the for 20 years and all together, then there is no need keeping the keeping the man holding his marriage. When you know for 20 years these people are not together, everybody is living with his own wife, with his own children and and and, and husband, they are living apart for 20 years. Then that is not in keeping that 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 diary. Praise God. Keeping that diary, there is a culture, there is something behind it, that which they know. Amen. That if they should release him, then some culture demands or what happens in some culture is that a woman, after a man got no married and all that, if the, the diary will not be released until that woman you know, is ready to settle down. Praise God. When there is a man coming to her in marriage, 
That is when that man will come and pick up. Am I saying something? So you have to go back and understand what the culture says. So the culture of Paris, they are not the same thing. Praise the name of our church. But God will help us in Jesus' name. Like I told you, an 18 years marriage, that through the grace of God in this place, that God, you know, brought them together. Nobody married anywhere. They have grown up children. The man was just somewhere in short, the man relocated. But he kept to himself. The woman was just, everybody was just busy. Praise God. They did not, nobody married anything, they married, no. Nobody was asking for divorce. So the team communicates, the man will communicate with all with the wife, the children will talk, he still pay their school fees, but what makes them not to stay together becomes a mystery. Are we together? Yes. So they have not separated. Not until when they came and to the glory of God, that thing that was making them not to stay together, God break that yoke. Until today, they have been together. Praise God. So, so you must understand the scenario and the events. And you look at it scripturally. Then you could give your advice. How it should be done. Praise the name of the Lord. If a woman attended a church and the husband come back and asks about his wife, and noted that she attended the church, attended you know, the church. The husband come into the church and asked his wife to leave the church and come back house. And the wife refused. She must. She met her pastor. Can she go with her husband? Or will she stay? And the pastor say to her, no, in this case, eh? or will she stay, will she stay, and the pastor say to her, no, in this case, will the wife obey her pastor or her husband? Praise God. Ephesians chapter 4. The wife obey your what? Your husband. Praise God. All together. Huh. There was a period that was going viral of a particular ministry. And there was a woman of God that claimed she has calling. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. And this woman claimed she has gifts. And she was working for God. In that church. And her pastor, who whatever she was doing, see the woman as a disobedient woman to him, who was not obeying her. But when she comes to church, she is the one preaching, singing, and doing all of things. And disobeying him. And it, 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 they kept managing the situation. Managing the situation. And the person of that church was supporting this woman because she was working for God. That was the angle. So he was looking at the calling. He was looking at the gifts. Amen. Looking at the service. And so he, he was supporting the woman. Encouraging the woman. And he went one day with that fussy that the woman should leave. Whoever that will stop not to exercise your calling, allow that person, leave that person. This is not simply something. On a vara, he was bragging. He don't even care what churches will say, what they will say. But how can any man stop you from exercising your calling? Your calling, your calling, your calling, your calling. If you know your calling will not respect any marriage, don't answer that calling. Praise God. Are we together? Every calling you have must affect your marriage. That is the beginning. Before you marry, you have been calling and calling and calling and calling. When you marry, 
That is where the calling starts again. Another dimension. Praise God. So the case of this woman, she was in the church and the husband came, come, call her, call her. The husband called you. The next day, stand up, meet your husband. Go and meet him. Amen. And while you go, you meet your husband. And your pastor said, no, don't go. Are you not aware in the church? Are you mad? Are you this? Are you that? Allah, let her remain. And you begin to talk to you because you love your pastor so much. You should know the one that keep you and keep your pastor and keep your husband. He has the final say. Praise God. No one the Bible in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, from verse 22, he said, Watch, submit yourself unto your own as unto what? Did he say unto your pastor? Is your pastor your husband? Praise God. So if you are disobeying that man and you are submitting to this man, something is wrong. So that man should be able to teach you. And to tell you, woman, submit to him. As you submit to that man, the pastor will be happy. Very, very happy. Praise God that you are submitting to that man. But if you are disobeying that man, and you come before the pastor, and you are claiming you are the best, you are doing this. No, you are just pretending. Praise the Lord. The Lord help us in the name of Jesus. So, this person should not listen to the pastor. Obey your husband. And whatever are the grievances can be resolved. Praise God. But try as much as you can and do your bid. Just do your own part. Try. No matter how difficult and how painful it might come, it might come with. Do your own part and leave the rest. Praise the name of the Lord. And I pray that no marriage will suffer set back. I pray no marriage will suffer set back. I say no marriage will suffer set back. In the name of Jesus. I believe we have answered this question. And because you are here, God will use you as a light that will be extended to other marriages. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And God will use you as an example that other people will learn from in the name of Jesus. No divorce, no separation. That will never be a portion in the name of Jesus. So you have married for many years and that years of divorce. No, 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 no. Headed the one in that man. Or headed, big headed the one in that woman. After seven children, eight children, five children, you wake up. You say you want to divorce. What happened now? Praise God. So that thing that is deceiving your eye is not going to help you. Praise God. And so we must be children of God and I pray that God will continue to uphold our marriages in the name of Jesus. If you are blessed, put your hands together for the Lord.